Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Mauricio Damian Guerrero? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Mauricio Guerrero was born on March 7, 2001, and lived in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. According to Mauricio, in October of 2020, he made contact with an OnlyFans creator named Rachel Nunes. She was almost four years older than Mauricio. Rachel lived in Summersworth, New Hampshire, which is about 356 miles from Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. OnlyFans is a website where content creators can post adult videos and images and receive payments from customers who possess poor judgment. Mauricio and Rachel started communicating on a regular basis. Mauricio was Rachel's customer. Now moving to the timeline of the crime. On February 9, 2022, Rachel's mother, Victoria, called the police during the early morning hours. Officers from the Summersworth Police Department responded to the house where Rachel, her young son, and her mother lived. Rachel and Victoria reported to the police that they believed someone was on the roof of the house. Victoria advised them that Rachel had a stalker, which was a reference to Mauricio. Rachel told the police that she woke up and saw someone standing in the doorway. She thought the person was her mother. When she called out, Mom, the person walked down the hallway. The police entered the attic and heard heavy footsteps on the roof. They went outside and saw Mauricio standing on a flat section of the roof. He was placed under arrest. Victoria told the police that she noticed that things were off during the week, like there was a downstairs window open about an inch, and the back doors were open on a few mornings. Rachel also made a statement to the police, telling them that she met Mauricio online through her OnlyFans job. Rachel gave him her address for her old apartment in nearby Dover, because she wanted him to buy her a TV and a fireplace. Mauricio drove up to New Hampshire uninvited. Rachel saw him ducking in his car. On another occasion, she looked out the window, and he was standing there. Rachel let him into her residence. He stayed there for about two hours before she asked him to leave. After this, the couple continued to communicate. Rachel said that sometimes Mauricio would be nice, and other times she would tell him, to leave her alone. On the night that Mauricio was arrested, he showed up in front of the house of Rachel's mother. Rachel asked him to leave and told him never to come to that address again. Two hours after this is when she woke up to see him standing in the hallway, staring at her. Rachel claimed that she did not invite him into her mother's house at any point. Mauricio decided to talk to the police. He admitted that he entered the house without permission. He said he wanted to get a TV that he had purchased for Rachel. He heard voices in the house, and he made his way to the attic. Mauricio was charged with nighttime burglary and released on his own recognizance. The police extracted data from Mauricio's phone. They found a video of Rachel's house that was recorded on February 8 at 10.15 a.m. A second video was recorded on February 9 at 3.19 a.m., which was just over an hour before the police were called. It was of Rachel in her bed, not wearing any clothing. She did not appear to realize that she was being recorded. When the police spoke to her about this recording, she confirmed that she did not provide consent and was not aware that the video was recorded. During this discussion with Rachel, she also mentioned her suspicions that Mauricio may have been in the attic for quite some time. When the police searched the attic, they found several items that belonged to Mauricio, including food, urine in a cup, AirPods, and a Bluetooth tracking device. Rachel mentioned that her keys had disappeared on February 8, the day before Mauricio was arrested. She looked everywhere for her keys without success, but then they mysteriously reappeared. The police brought Mauricio in for another interview. He said that Rachel told him that she wanted a man to be obsessed with her and to stalk her. Mauricio eventually offered more details about the alleged burglary. 
He had arrived in Summersworth on February 8 and broke into Rachel's house. He left the house and met up with Rachel the same day. They went to a store in the pickup truck that he was driving. Mauricio returned to the house at about 2 a.m., now on February 9. He made entry and recorded Rachel while she was sleeping. When the police searched the pickup truck that Mauricio had used, they found Rachel's panties, a key to her house, and a pry bar. Mauricio admitted to stealing the panties, making a copy of the key at a Home Depot, and using the pry bar to enter the house the first time. He told the police that when Rachel was in his truck, they had oral sex. The prosecution would later concede that Mauricio was telling the truth about this encounter. Mauricio received an upgrade to his charges. He was now facing four burglary charges, criminal trespass, and two violation of privacy charges. At trial, he was found guilty of two of the burglary charges, the criminal trespass, and the violation of privacy charges. He was also convicted of two other criminal trespassing charges as an alternative charge to the two burglary charges of which he was acquitted. So two of the burglary charges essentially were downgraded to criminal trespass. At the time making this video, Mauricio has not yet been sentenced. Realistically, the maximum sentence he is facing is around 15 years. Now moving to my analysis. There is no question that Mauricio entered the house where Rachel lived. This case is really about whether or not he had the intent to commit burglary. Essentially, the strategy of his defense was to get him convicted of trespassing, which is a misdemeanor, as opposed to burglary, which is a felony. Some people believe that Mauricio should have been convicted of all of the burglary charges. Others believe that he was manipulated and was really a victim in this case. Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that Mauricio was guilty. Starting with the inculpatory factors. Mauricio used a pry bar to break into the house where Rachel lived. He removed her keys, made a copy of her house key, took an item of clothing, and recorded a video of her when she was in bed. Mauricio actually lifted up the covers to get the shot he was looking for. Mauricio had a tracking device, which he was going to use to monitor Rachel's movements. He appeared to be getting pretty comfortable in the attic of the house. It's not like he broke in and left within a few minutes. He was really in this for the long run. He initially lied to the police about many elements of his actions during the incident. Mauricio never had an invitation to enter the house of Rachel's mother. He admitted that Rachel never told him to break in or otherwise to enter. Now moving to the exculpatory factors. Rachel was a content creator on OnlyFans and was extremely manipulative. She was able to extract items that she wanted from Mauricio, including a television. She was older than Mauricio and much more sophisticated in matters of love. Rachel and Mauricio had many discussions about sex, fantasies, and romance. She told him that she loved him. In December of 2021, after a trip that Mauricio made to New Hampshire, Rachel told Mauricio not to come around. She then contacted him and said that she missed him, loved him, and wanted him back. She referred to his stalking behavior as a, quote, little hot, unquote. After Mauricio entered the house the first time and left, Rachel performed oral sex on him in the pickup truck. Mauricio had tried to break off the relationship with Rachel, but she kept trying to re-engage him. She admitted that she wanted to mess with his head and to have him become obsessed with her. Mauricio was immature and naive. Perhaps he interpreted all these actions as being indicative of a romantic relationship, like he misunderstood the nature of the relationship. He viewed himself as a lover when he was really just a customer. He did not have the social skills to differentiate. In addition, from his point of view, maybe it looked like Rachel was serious when she glamorized his stalking behavior. Maybe she really did have some fantasy based around an obsessive lover. Mauricio's thinking may have been so concrete that he interpreted her fantasies literally. One of Mauricio's attorneys suggested that Rachel was not an honest individual. He said that she played dumb when talking to the police, pretending that she didn't know immediately who the intruder was. The attorney also implied that Rachel lied about having sex with Mauricio. Even the state admitted that the couple had sex. 
When considering all the evidence in this case, do I think that Mauricio is guilty? I think the jury was correct in this case. Mauricio was guilty of two counts of burglary, as well as the lesser charges. The problem for him in this situation is that he admitted that he was not invited into the house. Even if Rachel did have some type of fantasy about stalking that she communicated to Mauricio, this would not give him the right to burglarize the house where she lived. Some details would have to be worked out when trying to satisfy that type of fantasy. Mauricio simply could not take it upon himself to act without consent. In addition, it seems clear that Rachel did not have a stalking fantasy that she wanted to become a reality. She may have talked about that topic and glamorized it, but she did not literally mean that Mauricio should stalk her. People use expressions all the time that, if interpreted literally, would result in disaster. It was incumbent upon Mauricio to know the difference between the concepts of figurative and literal. Even though I think that Mauricio is guilty, I do not think he should be punished severely. There were a lot of mitigating circumstances in this case, including the manipulative behavior of Rachel. What she did was legal, but not moral. She took advantage of someone who was insecure and desperate. When he wanted to end the relationship, Rachel should have just left well enough alone. I view this as a case that would be best addressed with mental health counseling as opposed to a prison sentence. In addition, in my opinion, Mauricio should be given an opportunity to have his charges pardoned and expunged after a few years if he successfully participates in counseling. He doesn't appear to be a hardcore offender, rather just someone who overinvested in a fake relationship with a highly manipulative person. Rachel also appeared to have a massive sense of entitlement. She really thought that Mauricio owed her whatever she wanted. Moving to the last question, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Mauricio was a young man who was confused, insecure, socially awkward, and not physically attractive. He had an interest in love, but was unable to obtain a relationship in a traditional manner. He gravitated to OnlyFans as a way to satisfy his needs. Unfortunately, he made contact with Rachel. She quickly established a business relationship designed to extract benefits from Mauricio. When he crossed the boundary of this relationship, Rachel wasn't happy with him, but she sent him mixed messages. She appeared to pursue Mauricio, which only confused him more. He simply did not have the experience or the abilities to process this type of one-sided relationship. He kept confusing it with love. In a sense, this arrangement was a shortcut to love, the only way he could have romance. Mauricio had a desire to make it real, even though any reasonable person would have known that it was a fantasy. He became effective at lying to himself. Mauricio was in denial. In this state, Mauricio transformed into a stalker. This happened because, from his perspective, the nature of the relationship appeared to encourage and reward it. Like when he drove to New Hampshire, he ended up having sex with Rachel. He probably viewed this as a positive. To Mauricio, the stalking behavior is what he was supposed to be doing. It was his role in this dysfunctional relationship. This was consistent with his primitive understanding of love and the specific circumstances of this unconventional, bizarre, and unsettling relationship with Rachel. He had learned lessons of manipulation from Rachel, distorted them through his poor critical thinking skills, and then transformed them into something exceedingly creepy. Mauricio had been treated like a commodity, and he started treating Rachel the same way. To him, she became property. This made sense to him. It was reciprocity. In his mind, he deserved a key to her house, had a right to track her using an electronic device, and could make a secret video recording of her. Mauricio's behavior does not fit into any of the major stalker categories. He is in a league of his own. There are not many stalkers who would hang out in a victim's attic. It would appear as though Mauricio is a pioneer in the area of attic stalking, something that society never wanted or needed, but Mauricio decided to invent anyway. Those are my thoughts on the case of Mauricio Guerrero, Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. 
As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.